Hello everybody and thank you for inviting me to this conference and I'm really excited to be here. My name is Lori Broccoloni and I am, I call myself a holistic practitioner for equines and humans. Um, I went to school uh, back in 2000, I think 2001 or 2002, something like that in Florida. Um, <clears throat> and what I studied was how to care for horses um, and prevent a lot of injuries, um, illnesses, um, and I teach people how to keep their horses healthy. And so this is my site. And I'm going to start off because I was invited here to teach people, teach you guys how you can better keep your horses healthy with your programs. And in, in turn, it would save you a lot of money. Now, <clears throat> this is a quote from DuPont, Marion DuPont. When a horse owner's maintain their horse's health and is knowledgeable in first aid, the outcome re for recovery is much successful. And that's from Marion DuPont Center, Virginia. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you my book that I wrote, um, Natural Equine Remedies. And it's a book about all these practical or a broad spectrum of ailments that um, horses get over their lifetime. Um, and it tells you the causes and, and the remedies for them. But um, just want to let you know that this is my program or my education and learning how to do things holistically and naturally are not conventional, okay? And contrary to what people believe after the 1930s, 35, 40s, when medicine started coming in and uh, vaccines, um, the old way of treating horses and treating people was left to the doctors. And so, in my experience, in my lifetime being on this planet, I found that natural remedies and keeping yourself and your horses healthy um, <clears throat> is much better than taking meds. And I only have firsthand experience from that because I was raised, um, my parents were really great parents. I'm not going to say they weren't, but my mother had um, mental issues. And from the time I was six years old till the time she passed, I got to experience a lot of the medical field as a child and mental hospitals that I had to um, commit her to over my teenage years. But during the time from the time I was six and became aware of my mother's illness, um, all I saw as a child was doctors giving her pills, giving her pills and making her worse. Whereas my dad, he grew up in a farm in Ohio, I think it was a hundred acres and they were very poor and they had a lot of kids. Um, his mother had 14 kids and seven of them died of TB or other illnesses. And um, he put himself, everybody in the family put themselves through college. And my husband, my father was an Air Force retired lieutenant colonel. And, but he knew how to keep himself healthy because they did that at the farm. A lot of herbal tea, um, eating healthy, a lot of fruits and veggies and exercise. So, um, so he was my rock as he, he kept us healthy with the food, the nat, you know, feeding us healthy. You know, we didn't have a lot of box stuff except for cereal, um, stuff like that. Most of the time you had to make your own peanut butter and jelly sandwich or ham, ham and cheese sandwich and, and bacon and eggs and stuff like that. So, so I saw a difference and I didn't like doctors. In fact, I hated them because of what they did to my mother. And then when I got six, I have a very small throat. So it's hard for me to take pills. And they didn't have liquid antibiotics, so I ended up with having my tonsils removed, which I really thought that my parents were going to die. 
kill me because it was a horrible experience. I was eight years old, and it's scary, and it hurt. So I didn't really care for doctors, and I didn't care for dentists either. So I, I wanted to learn. Um, you know, I was pretty healthy all through my 20s and most of my lifetime. And I didn't really start studying until I got married to my husband and we had four stepchildren that we had to raise. And so I kept them healthy through um, a lot of orange juice and I cooked, I still cook to this day, every single day. But I loved horses and I had horses and um, this is my Zabrina. She's my first herd mare. Um, we had her from birth. Her mother had her in a field and broke out. She used to, used to break out on this farm we rented. And she was my love of my life. But I didn't know what I know now when I was raising her. And I worked for a veterinarian, a horse and cow vet back then. And so in my journey, she became ill. Her mother became ill with COPD. And um, it was traumatic for me, and, you know, I used all the drugs that the vets did and everything like that. But in my book, it talks about COPD. I'm not going to go there. But what I want to explain to you is I could have prevented the COPD, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. But I was told to give my mare rhino shots, and my mare was perfectly healthy. I'd owned her for almost two years. I never had a problem, not even snot out of her. And as soon as she had her baby that fall, she ended up with heaves. And I'd given her four rhino shots during her pregnancy. And I am a believer that the rhino shots caused the heaves. It lowered her immune system. It's just my opinion. But I, I didn't think it would transfer to the baby. But when she turned 20, or she was 21, um, it did pass to her and I lost her. And it just broke my heart. And the real reason why I wrote the book, Natural Equine Remedies, and did my pain point release right here, is because um, after school, I went out and worked on many horses and I worked for a rescue. I worked at the racetrack and I learned tons at the racetrack. And <clears throat> I learned a lot about nutrition and feeding horses the way they need to be fed because they're herbivores. And so we had this thoroughbred, his name was Romeo, and my daughter was into jockeying and up at the track, and so we took him up there, even though he had episodes of colic, but we got him through. But I fed him everything wrong, okay? Everything wrong. And, um, I did what the vets told me to do, and he died at the age of three. And it broke my heart, it just broke my heart. So I met somebody two weeks later, Dr. Regan Golob, and my life changed from there. My horses changed from there. I was able to keep my horses healthy um, <clears throat> from then on. And um, a lot of people are not gonna agree with me, but let's take a look, let's just take a look guys let's put our open um let's just open our minds here this is a learning experience this is me trying to help you help your horse be healthy and save you money on on vet bills and save you money on on feed bills and caring for your horse it's really simple and it's so simple it's not even funny so and i get calls every week every week i get calls mostly all over the country um, horses, the horse they're calling about is usually, um, usually between 60 to 100% on its last leg. And I'm the last, after they're spending like two, three thousand dollars or more, I've had people spend up to ten thousand dollars on vet bills and stuff like that to no avail. And then here I give them, take them away from their feeding program, take away a lot of the vaccines, um, can use no sods they work just as well and um and i've been able to turn around i'd say let's say all the ones that were from 60 to 100 percent let's from one to ten i'd say eight i've been at eight horses out of that percentage 
I've been able to turn around to where the horses had at least one to two, three years of a really good quality pain-free life. And um, never had anybody complain about me, just thank me and thank me and thank me. And I've saved a lot of heartache for people. I'm not here to brag about that. I'm just saying that those are my results. And I'm not a college person. Um, I don't know all the big language, but I do know everything about homeopathics and nosodes and herbal medicine um, or herbal remedies and mostly diet. Diet is the number one cause of a lot of the ailments. So this is Mariam DuPont. I know um, uh, they're saying that um, <clears throat> Although each patient is unique, advanced planning for critical situations can tip the odds in a favor of successful outcome. Okay, so owners that should maintain their horse's health and well-being by scheduling, and they're saying regular appointments with their vets, but you don't really need to do that. So um, <clears throat> you want your vet out once a year, that's fine. But learning how to administer basic first aid and keeping first aid kit on hand is also encouraged by DuPont. Okay, now this is what I wrote my book on because this is what they mainly see. This is what vets really see all the time. Some, some of the most common equine emergencies include uh, colic, disease of the gastrointestinal tract, wounds, muscular injuries, diarrhea, um, non-natal complications, respiratory distress, um, symptoms such as recumbence, the animal is down and cannot get up, depression, severe bleeding, colic, and singles that urgent care is needed, okay? It's imperative that the veterinarians be contacted immediately, immediately at any time the horse is displaying abnormal behavior. And like he's off feed or he's not walking straight. Survival rates, survival rates as many conditions are directly cor correct, correctly, I can't say that word, correlated to early diagnosis and treatment so that the sooner the patient is seen, the better. And I do agree with that. In all my remedies in the book, Natural Equine Remedies, which is down below, and I'll show, we'll see it in a minute. Um, it, the first thing I tell people, call your vet, call your vet, call your vet. But do this until the vet arrives. You don't know how many people in the Midwest and in California and in Oregon and in Washington State, they have a very, very hard time getting a vet out. Sometimes it takes two days Sometimes you don't have that. You need to work with your horse the way you can. And most of the stuff, believe it or not, is common sense. And you can get a lot of the stuff uh, in your kitchen cabinet, <laughs> believe it or not. So um, then it just goes on to talk about that. So, so then I went out to, um, I went out to, work on the horses at the um i went out to work on the horses at the rescue in mount airy at the time and she had a field of horses that were like feral horses she didn't have enough you know volunteers they couldn't pay for people to come out and work with the horses so one field was about 30 horses on about 35 i think it was six 35 acres and, you know, they were fed and everything like round bales and stuff like that. And so we went out to work on them to, you know, do their pain point release. And you can go to my site and you can see the videos on the pain point release. This is my pony. This pony came to me um, free and they were telling me that, um, and this is him like four days or five days after I had him. Um, <clears throat> and he is on the Big Sky Minerals, which we will talk about later on. But um, right now, I just want you to notice something. Um, you see his hoofs here are a little long and his heels are really low. And this is when I first got him. So I wanted to do the pain point release. So it's, it shows you before and then it shows you after. So um, you can see how long his toes are. And so they said he had navicular, but he didn't have navicular because his toes were so long. And when you do that, you're pushing on the horse's um, bursa. And so when they do x-rays, the bursa is going to look like it's white or swollen. 
And so the vet's going to say, well, maybe it's calcium, which will move the niglavicular bone. So the best thing to do is it's a natural remedy. You just take the homeopathic apis mm -hmm. and you give it to them to get that fluid. There's usually fluid in there. And if the horse is young and he's not ridden too hard, that's the first place I would go. I'd put him on the natural diet and use the mini sign. And I've had like four necrovicular cases this week for some reason. But anyway, so to make a long story short, you can watch um, the before and after pain points. So anyway, so I went out to, um, oh, and the pony did not have navicular. Uh, we got a good farrier and he was fine. I gave lessons on him. He showed for years. He's still alive. <laughs> and he's the longest one on my property that's been on Big Sky Minerals. So anyway, so I went out to the field and I was, you know, three years out of school, three or four years out of school. And by the time I was done, I mean, the horses were actually, they were feral horses. I mean, they were not handled prop, you know, a lot, but they would come to us. I mean, they actually would walk to us and then I'd work on their, their withers were always out, their stifles were out. I call it out, meaning it's um, an energy blockage on the horse. Um, and it's very easy to use your hands to release it. And that's what I was trying to show people and teach them. And I gave workshops, lots of workshops on it. And, um, but that particular day, um, after working on like, I think we worked on 15 or yeah, about 15 horses and they just started coming up to us, just started coming up and standing there, letting me work on them. And then my heart, you know, you're next to them. They have this huge heart and they're huge, um, aura. And I, you know, would say, you know, why is this horse here? Why is this horse here? A beautiful horse. Oh, because he barked you know, or he reared, or he just wouldn't do this, and blah, blah, woof, woof, and, but it was always because the horse was in pain, and sure enough, the withers were out, and it was so easy to put back in, and the horse, you know, some were show horses, some were pets for people, some were like kids' horses, and they just dumped them there, because they couldn't figure out, you know, all the bits and the trainers, and they didn't want to put the money, and they didn't learn, or they didn't know, they weren't aware that their horses had been in pain they just did you know stronger bits and saddles or whatever when a simple method of checking your pain points and then releasing them with your hands could make that horse out of pain and the horse becomes calmer and then it's easier to work with and so um, my testimonial here I don't know if I didn't put it in here I didn't put it in here I can't believe I didn't put it in here Let's see if I put it in here. Um, I guess I didn't put it in here. I had a testimonial from a lady that, um, shoot. Oh, I can't believe I don't have it. I wonder if I put it in my thing. But anyways, so let me go back here. I had a lot of testimonials about, um, this one came in, the lady had spent like $5,000 and she couldn't get her horse back in. She couldn't ride her horses. And for some reason this, when I changed the website, it took it off. Shucks. I'll find it and put it back on. But anyway, so she emailed me and she said that, um, she was so grateful that, um, she learned the pain point release and she said for $40, she was able to um, put her horse back in. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. So, um, <clears throat> and you can watch, this is another testimonial about a stallion in a show. It's kind of loud, mm -hmm. but it, it gives you an idea of the before and afters. But anyway, so I was there, um, I was crying by the time I left the field of those horses because there was no reason for them to be there. Um, if the owners could just learn how to put the withers back in and the stifles and the hips and the front shoulders and the neck, a lot of them had bumps on their neck and they just couldn't bend, they couldn't do, you know, this horse here is Ben and she couldn't ride him for two years. She spent about $2,000 on him and then she stopped and he would cross canter and he would buck and the day that we made the DVD, the video, um, 
you'll see in the DVD if you do buy, decide to buy it, um, that she's smirking at me <laughs> because she didn't think that the horse was going to get any better after I did it. But um, he had humongous relief, and um, the video shows you that. And it also shows you her testimonial. So she rode him that night, and um, <laughs> he didn't cross can her. He didn't buck her off. And she was able to use them again for like two, three years. So um, I thought that was pretty awesome. But she didn't stay on the program and she did corral paddocks, which they're not bad, but horses need to get out and roam. And so um, he ended up getting um, some kind of arthritis really bad and she didn't stay on the feeding program. So they, he ended up passing away. But you get to see her testimonial on how he changed and he stayed that way. He, he kept his pain points in for a while. And then I would, we taught her how to do it too, but you know, she usually had the um, people that trained there do it. So, um, anyways, so when I got back from the, um, the rescue, I was crying on the way home. And I said, I didn't, I didn't sign a contract with um, Dr. Regan Gola, and I didn't sign a contract with my teacher. And that the world needed to know about the pain point release. And so even though this, we're talking about nutrition, we're gonna get there, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's see, 21 minutes. Oh, so I can speed it up. I think it's supposed to be an hour um, talk, but I think I'm gonna make it around 45 minutes to 50 minutes and give you some time. Uh, and I hope you guys are learning something. But anyway, so um, what I discovered, uh, I went back to school and I've been going to school, is that uh, I'm self-educated too, that even with the pain points, if, if, if the horse is not better after I do it, then there's usually um, issues and the issues that the the vets talk about up here. So that is why I wrote um, the Natural Equine Remedies book. Because when I would go to, I went to the, um, I wrote the book, I did the DVD and um, put it out there. And I started teaching people all over the country, all over the world. And then this is Renee, and you know Renee, um, she, um, this was her horse and he had limes and he was recovering from it, but it won't get any bigger. I don't know why, but she put him on the big sky. She did. She listened to me. I don't know why she listened to me, but she listened to me. A lot of people don't listen to me, but she listened to me. She did. And this is her horse before. And he could tell that he was just, he was shutting down. He probably would have not lived that long. Not, I can't predict that uh, if she would have kept on the same program. And she was, she was spending a lot of money on vets and doing all kinds of stuff for him. And he just wasn't rideable or anything. Now, this is him seven weeks later. And um, she was able to start using him for dressage. And that's a huge, huge difference. And all she did was the apple cider vinegar. She did the, the limes protocol, which is the no sods. And I think she did the super tonic. And then she put him on the big sky minerals. And as far as I know, she still uses them. Um, <clears throat> so this is a video on finding your horse's lameness issues. And I teach that and you just go to that video and watch it. This is checking your horse's back ribs. And we use a dousing rod and, and it's not woo woo, okay? They use dousing rods to find water, okay? And where the rod hits is usually where there's a lameness issue and you'll find heat there or you'll find a bump. Um, I was at a Richard Shrake clinic. Um, I was using the acupressure points for the for the hawks, which is right here. And I pushed in one side and pushed in another. Well, when I pushed on the inside hawk, which is here, the horse buckled and he had a fresh cut down here by his hawk. It was on his hawk. It was amazing. So, and then if you wanna see my certification, it's there. Um, I do the student, I'm the student of the body code. I do animal best which I don't really practice anymore. If I do anything, I do the body code and the matrix energetics. Okay, and you can email me if you have any questions about anything. 
And then here are my videos. This is my number one to go to to keep the horse's gut balanced. As long as you have the pH balanced in your horse's gut and the horse is moving, pooping a couple times a day, um, at night and everything, um, <clears throat> this is my best remedy. And you just take and mix it all up in a gallon, watch the video, and you will see um, a difference in your horse um, and you'll prevent colic, the number one reason for horses that call the vet. I mean, that's the number one reason. It's the number one death of horses. Um, I even recently helped a lady through an impaction, um, and there's a video on that on my YouTube channel. So, but this I use um, about a cup or two uh, of the high track, the mini zine, and apple cider vinegar mixed with water. And I just pour about an ounce or two over my horse's feed. And my feeding program is just Stanley Timothy hay pellets, no oats, no barley, no nothing. But you can add that if you want, but no commercial feed. So over here is a geometric, geometric mineral map. And when you click on that, it gives you a video and how to use it. So you can see what kind of minerals are on your acreage. And it's in the, um, the link to that is probably in the video, but it's also in my how to identify and release your horse's pain points. Okay. So if you want to try the high track, you can buy a pint here. Um, you can buy the gallon at Big Sky Minerals. And then I talk about uveitis and rain rot. But I have many, many more. Um, what not to feed, why not to feed oil. And the number one thing that I want to take away from this program is what not to feed and why. Okay, so we're going to go back to my... Um, <clears throat> Natural Equine Remedies book in a minute, but watch this video. These are all horses. I had them on a very expensive mineral feed um, before I got onto the Big Sky. Big Sky didn't come in until like 2011 anyway, and it's made by the Amish, um, and it's amazing for the price. It's really amazing. So this is a workshop, and she gives a testimonial on here about the workshop and what she learned, and she was really impressed. Uh, this is how to gain horses weight um, naturally and this is another video on it let's see I don't know why it won't go down anymore but that's it so um, so let's go to the natural equine free feeding program now this program will keep your horse healthy okay you will have less I have people that have called me like four or five years after being on it and um, they say they haven't seen a vet in years, <laughs> except for checkups or whatever. And so uh, this is a testimonial on the Big Sky. Uh, my colic remedy, I have a couple, I have lots in there. What to do with your ulcers. You create your ulcers because horses are not, they're herbivores and they're not designed to eat commercial grains. And when they eat commercial grains, what happens is they build more acid and that acid creates more acid and then that's when you get your ulcers. And then you also get holes in the stomach, which is really not pretty when they pass because then you gotta call the vet out and put your horse down, it's really sad. These are thoroughbreds that we had in for training. You can see how they gobble up the uh, Big Sky Minerals, the Stanley Hay Pellets, the Timothy Stanley Hay Pellets, um, not anything else. Now this is a horse, I picked him up for my friend to haul him to a new home and she had to keep him for a couple weeks and um, so he, this horse was on B-Pulp. This horse was on, uh, I think she said six pounds, six to eight pounds of grain a day with hay and B-Pulp and oil, corn oil. This is the same horse without it. <laughs> Just the Big Sky Minerals. And I think she gave it the apple cider vinegar. She didn't even use the high track. She just switched it to the apple cider vinegar mixed with water. So, um, and then this is the feeding program. Okay, so you take one to three cups of the Timothy Stanley hay pellets. They must be Stanley. You get them at Tractor Supply or any, you can go to their website and you can find out the stores in your area that would carry it. And yes, so when the horses chew, they create the saliva and the saliva helps them digest their food and it goes where it needs to go. And then the big sky minerals go on top 
we top dress it with the, about two ounces of the Big Sky Minerals. We do soak it a little bit. I just scoop it up in water, and then when they start chewing the Stanley Hay pellets, it breaks down and creates a saliva, and they gain weight because of that saliva. It's not the grain, what you think. It's really not the grain. Um, some horses can eat it dry. I found that sometimes baby horses, like two and three years old, they like it dry, you know, but it's up to you. Um, and a side note, if you do give Ivory as a warmer, I ask you to stop because it's a nerve inhibitor and you will see horses later on in life start choking. And if they're given Ivory Mectrum or any kind of Mectrum, because it's a nerve inhibitor from the, it kills the nerves from the back of the brain, goes all the way down their spine and kills the worms, but it doesn't kill the eggs. Um, <clears throat> you can, uh, you may end up with, I see a lot of choking with Ivory Mectrum. That's just my, that's just my um, observant of life. Um, I go by based on results. I don't go by scientific stuff because scientific stuff is not for everybody all the time. You know, it's you want to feed the horse as close to nature as you can. So then you pour um, a quarter cup of the apple cider vinegar. It's about two ounces, mixed with water. And if you don't, if you want to do my mixture, then add the high track. Just add a cup or two, and then mix it up. And if you have horses with arthritis, I add the mini sign. It's an electrolyte. It helps with the calcium absorption. And then, of course, if it's cold out and if you're working your horse or anything, you can add um, you can add black oil sunflower seeds, and they must be whole. And yes, it's a bird seed, but they must be whole because if they're whole, when they when they bite into them, there's an oil in there, and they get the oil out. And they also get the enzymes that they need for the fat and everything, and it has omegas in it. Now, <clears throat> if you do not want to do the black wool sunflower seeds and you want to do flax, I highly recommend that you do chia seeds because chia seeds are so much better and they're not synth um, synthetically um, messed with. Whereas flax seed, they have to work on it to get it to where it's formed. They have to process it, where chia seeds are not processed. They're just cleaned. You can add cracked corn or whole oats, and again, whole oats. Cracked corn, you can see if there's any um, mold in there or whatever, but the only time we have feed, I feed cracked corn is when it's like 30 below, I mean 30 degrees and under, and just at nighttime, a quarter cup. It helps keep them warm. And if your horse is cut, recovering from an illness or you take a horse in that has been um, underfed or you know, like cut, recovering from uh, EPM or limes or anything like that, you want to get on the Ultra Plus, and the Ultra Plus does, um, it cleans the liver and it cleans the kidneys, and it also crosses the blood brain barrier and kills parasites there, as well as oregano oil. And all this is in my Natural Equine Remedies book. <coughs> so the Oasis also puts on weight, it um, stimulates the high gut, hind gut of the horse. My pony that I showed you earlier, he's about we think he's 29 or 30. We don't know how old he is. He's, he's, he's between 28 and 30 years old. And last year, the year before, he came out of um, winter not looking good. So I put him on the Oasis. And he stayed on the Oasis for almost a year. And then he started pushing it away. And now he looks fabulous. <laughs> he looks absolutely fabulous. He's back on the big sky. Um, he was done with, the, I guess, his hind gut. And he's digesting and he's running around. And he's doing great. So, Big Sky Minerals are a balanced, synergetically formulated profile with a mixture of element of clay beds. And um, there is a, uh, let's see, this is a recording on it. So, when you go to my site, the recording is there. Please listen to that, and it will give you a ton of information on the Big Sky. The Big Sky will improve 90% of all health issues that the horse can acquire over its lifetime. It will balance and restore optimal health when the horse is recovering from illness. 90% of all of them. I've seen horses with tendons go away, uh, knee pain go away. I've seen um, all kinds of stuff. Um, the Big Sky Minerals does have a probiotic and an enzyme producing formula in it and a price tag that every horse owner will love. You can now eliminate most or even all of your horse supplements that saves you time and money. And that's important. Don't overfeed your minerals. I went to this one barn. This horse hit the floor. Hit the floor. They were having the vet out. It broke my heart. There was nothing I could do to open their minds 
to letting me work on the horse to hearing. She had a tub full of uh, Smart Pack. And, she, and then she buted the horse when the vet was coming out. I said, why did you butte the horse? How's he going to find the pain? Even though I found the pain and I could have fixed it, but they didn't want to pay me. And they didn't want to listen to me. And it was just so sad. And the horse's eyes were in so much pain. It just, it just broke my heart. And so, uh, <coughs> so you can also do this if your horses are in work too. And then this gives you an idea of how much the, what's in the Big Sky Minerals. They do have um, one part of salt in there, but not a whole lot of salt. And then we went through this. So, um, let's go back to my Natural Equine Remedies book. If I can get it on. Okay, there. So, my Sabrina, I miss her. But, you know, God was good, and then I ended up with um, another horse that I don't know why I won't go up. That looks just like her, and her name is Spirit Baby. Baby girl, I call her. So, uh, and Romeo. Oh my God, he just, you talk about cry. Oh my God, I cried. I could still cry. But he was my lesson. If it wasn't for him passing, I would have never been able to teach people what I know now. Mm -hmm. And this tells you about me. Um, my experiences, and um, <clears throat> this is a lady that I went to, her horse had, oh, oh, all kinds of problems, but he didn't have anything, <laughs> it was just his stifles were out, and um, he whispers and nickers at her, she didn't even know that he could whinny, she thought he had a, a throat problem, he was a thoroughbred, <laughs> um, it's just amazing, so, um, and it just tells you the preface, uh, build his immune system, have a healthier, more well-balanced horse, plus create an environment where the horse has fewer illnesses and uh, fewer injuries that can save your horse. So this is why I wrote the book. Uh, and this talks about the DuPont thing. So, but let's go down here. Talks about herbal medicine. Um, Um, you know, or of course, call your vet. I'm not going to say not to call your vet. Um, and then it has all kinds of links. Of course, it's 10 years old. So there's some that are broken. She's still a lot around. And she did uh, do a uh, review on my book. It took me uh, almost a year, good year, to get this book. And eight, six or eight publishers to do this book. It's very intense. It's like my Bible. So... <clears throat> She, I put her in here so because she's a very knowledgeable on horses and their joints and why things happen to horses. This is the liver point right here where the thumb is. You put your hand over here on this bone. And you come up here and you push that. And that will show you if it buckles. That means that there's a blockage there and you need to clean it. Um, an energy blockage. And then it shows you the liver point again. You push on it again if it... If it um, buckles, that means you have to clean it. And I would go first with the Ultra Plus from the Big Sky Mineral people. They're Amish. Um, but they like, contrary to people think about Amish. I know you think, oh, yeah. Well, you know, there's plenty of people that are cruel people in regular world, too. But Amish do want to keep their horses alive. They do want to keep their horses around and healthy as possible. And that's why they made this stuff. But you can use apple cider vinegar mixed with water or Benonite clay, and that will clean the kidney point if it buckles. Okay, so I just, this talks about, this is the wheel that um, the Big Sky Minerals is made of. So they all go together and um, the horse has to have a balanced mineral, not too much um, copper, not too much calcium, not too much phosphorus. Um, but the first three or four chapters of this book will teach you about the horse's immune system. And this book is only $20. And, and the girl, that the last one that edited it and got it to print said that it's, it was worth much more than that because of the information. So um, why horses need minerals. Um, and they need trace amount minerals. They don't need minerals that are, um, you know, 
formulated or synthetic. So, um, talks about chelated minerals and all of Big Sky Minerals is chelated. But I want to get to, uh, it talks about the oxides. You don't want to, you don't want to read your labels, okay? You want to read your labels and we're going to go there now because inorganic calcium can do a lot of nasty things to your horses, okay? And you don't know what kind of calcium you're getting. I do know what kind of calcium I'm getting in Big Sky because it comes straight out of the ground. Unfortunately, you have to sign up for this. Um, you can no longer access it, but you can access the information from there at dynamitespecialties.com and on Facebook at Dynamite Specialties. Um, you want to make sure that your magnesium is not an oxide, even though we do have an oxide in the Big Sky Minerals, but it's just a trace amount and it's enough for the horse to handle a day. If you overload them with oxide, you're going to get a stiff horse. You need the sulfate. The sulfate, they can, like if I have too much magnesium, the horse will throw it off. He will just throw it off. So, um, <clears throat> talks about the nervous system. And a lot of people tell me that the horses calm down. Their high-headed horses calm down after, um, after they start feeding the big sky minerals because um, they got the magnesium. And magnesium makes you relax. It um, helps the, the, the nervous system. Um, it's very good for you. And then this is the colon. <laughs> so the small column is what, the small intestine right here is what the oasis is for. It activates the bugs in here. And I guess after a year, my horse decided to, my pony decided like, I had enough, I got enough bugs. So um, I think he went on a bag and a half and that was it. He was done, he just kept pushing it away. My daughter even said, you know, hey, I'm not eating it no more. So that's off the web. So that's why I have the other recording on SoundCloud. This tells you how to feed. And then, of course, before and after. Now you can really see this picture. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? So I'm at 41 minutes. I'm doing really good here. I want to get to what not to feed. Yay. Okay, what not to feed. Force-fed salt. You do not want to force-feed it. Let them decide on their own. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that either. So you want to get the, you don't want to, you don't want all this refined salt. You want the, um, now I don't know if this is link is going to work. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if it's going to work. It's going to work. Uh, nope, I didn't think so. They took it off. They took, oops. Oh, shoot. Sorry. They took it off the um, market. I mean, the web. Because it was a really good article. So, um, you can do Redmond Salt. Uh, you can type in Redmond Salt. You don't have to use this one. Um, let's see. Also, Hill Youngs carries it, um, but you just you d salt blocks are glued together with and have toxic preservatives. If your horse is deficient in minerals, it's going to try and get them from the salt block, and most horses will break the salt block up and bite into it because horses have a smooth tongue, okay, and um, they they can't get the salt from licking it. And um, so you want to um, break it up. Cows have a, um, a rough tongue and they can eat that, but horses do not. And by eating it a lot, you can check your horse's TMJ and you'll see that your horse is reactive to your TMJ because he's licking all the time. So just make sure that your, your salt, you put it out loose and free choice and let your horse decide. Okay, here you go. This is the main culprit that you have problems with right here. Beet pop bran and rice bran are all byproducts of the human food industry. They are heavily laden with pesticides and in many cases genetically modified crops. Now I can tell you this is genetically modified, this is genetically modified, and this is genetically modified. So, <clears throat> so this talks about uh, the extract juice from beets from human consumption and then the leftover pot is pulp is what we, as meaning horse owners, are feeding our horses. That means there are incredibly high concentrated of pesticide solvents and other nasty things. 
uh, in many horse senior feeds and complete feeds. Okay, so this is from a, um, it's lacking in nutrients such as vitamin A and selenium, uh, and it also will block the absorption of calcium. Uh, it's very high in oxalates, which bind calcium. So when you work on a horse with pain point release and you can't get anywhere, you can tell that it's stiff and it's got, um, it's calcium's block and it's, it's really hard to put back in. Now, this is a testimonial. You're absolutely right. Beet pulp is not a complete feed. It must be balanced with proper vitamin and mineral supplement. It is very high and oxalate, your link showed, which bind calcium. So though it appears to be high in calcium, it actually isn't a good source since our calcium is not well absorbed. And this is from Feed Your Horse Like a Horse, Juliet Getty. Okay? And everybody knows, they've heard about her. This is a, a veterinarian, okay? I certainly agree. That beet pulp all on its lonesome doesn't come close to providing an adequate balanced mineral profile. Few, few feeds do. Great grass hay is about the only one that really fills the bill for being one-stop shopping, even if that not 100% of the time. And then this talks about a girl. <laughs> She's like, oh, my horse is not engaging in the hind end. And then she took it off and then it engaged. Do you think that was the problem with the beep pop and the alfalfa? <laughs> yes. So, um... It takes four molecules of water. That's why your horse looks like he's gained weight. It takes four molecules of water to digest one molecule of beet pulp. So it's going to tax the horse's kidneys because he's got to produce all that water. And um, it puts a heavy burden on their kidneys. And you can read about that here if it's still on. But if not, you can email me. I can send you to a link. Molasses depletes the adrenal glands. And Andy and I did fight over this quite a bit because I did feed my horses molasses, but I did not feed them from the commercial feeds. I fed it from the grocery store, so you get a high-grade molasses. And if I do feed them molasses, it's only for new horses that have come in here and they just refuse to eat the Stanley Timothy hay pellets or something or, or whatever. Um, so I just give them like maybe a tablespoon, mix them with the apple cider vinegar, and that's about it. Uh, but it's it's a good, it's an okay electrolyte, but you don't want to feed it um, from any kind of feed store because of the antifreeze that they keep in it. Now, there is wheat middlings in the Big Sky Minerals, but um, consists of fine particles of wheat bran, wheat shorts, wheat germ, wheat flour, the tail of the meal. So it's like whatever's on the bottom of the mill, this is what they put in. And it helps to... It's like a filler for foods, but it has no really nutritional value. But the reason why we put it into the Big Sky is because the Big Sky would come in a brick. So we need something in there to, to, to bind it up, to unbind it. And you really can't see it in there. Um, but for a ton, he puts 20 pounds in. And that's for a ton, 1,400 pounds to 20 pounds. Okay, um, and the horses just poop it out. They don't really absorb it, but it helps. So um, it also has, if, you know, it's the number one product in most commercial feeds, okay? So uh, so phytic acid comes from these brands. A brand, a lot of people use that for after the horse is born or the baby's born and they give the brand hall mash and it does clean out the gut. It does do that but also irritates it too. Don't really need to do that. It's, you can just give the high track and um, the Dizen from Essential Oils, Deterra, um, but mostly um, the high track would do that and the Ultra, Ultra Plus. Um, you don't wanna feed corn oil, rice bran oil, any kind of oil. Why? They don't have, a, they don't have gallbladders. It's very hard for horses to digest oil. And what is the first thing that people do, the vet does when he comes out to colic? He <laughs> puts mineral oil in it. <laughs> Why? Because the mineral oil goes right through. So, um, so it talks about that in the book. Um, 
they can get rancid in nature. Um, it also prevents the absorption of vitamin A, D, E, and K. And at the track, the bleeders were always given corn oil, and that's why they bled. So you take the uh, corn oil away, I don't bleed as much. Also, corn oil can um, deprive the hormones, according to Dr. Wheel, and the amaze from omega-6 fatty acid tend to increase inflammation. And a lot of people argue that with the sunflower seeds. Um, but if, if that's a concern, I mean, it takes a lot of sunflower seeds to get that way. But in the oils, it's right there. It's going to get in. And it's going to go through, but then you're going to have joint problems. Okay? Feed chia seeds, guys. Feed chia seeds. About a half a cup a day. You get them at wholesale chia seeds. Google it. You'll find really good um, places, and it's great for your digestion. Uh, <clears throat> they put, some companies put mineral oil in their feeds. Don't know why. Uh... Corn has twice as many uh, calories as oats, and unlike what is widely believed, it's not a hot feed. Corn is low in fiber, and it's fiber being digested in the gut that creates the heat. And that's why when it's cold out, below 30 degrees, you feed corn at night. It's not going to colic on that. It's going to keep them warm. But you can also add black oil sunflower seeds. And rice bran oil is a highly pesticide crop, like coffee, um, and it's high in phytic acid which is also discussed earlier, it ties up calcium, prevents absorption. So that's why you don't feed any kind of oil at all. They get their oil from the, from the tops of um, the, um, the weeds and the oats or whatever they're eating out there, and the, you know, the oil from the sunflower seeds. Now, if you're feeding soybean, now we didn't have Cushing's as early as four years old or five years old or eight years old back in the day, probably about 10 years, 10, 15 years ago, we didn't see it. But all of a sudden it rose because when you feed soybean oil, which is any kind of soybean, soybean meal, soybean, anything, it's high in estrogen. It'll block iodine production and therefore attacks the thyroid, which may be the reason why you're seeing so many IR horses, okay? Too much alfalfa, too much protein. You get all kinds of issues with that. Uh, sometimes alfalfa can go as high as 27%. A horse can't handle 27%. Uh, so, a horse digests in the serum as a formation vat to digest fiber, not excess protein. Plant, pro plant protein byproducts such as soybean meal are often poorly digested because they are energy deficient. Oil nature puts in the soybean A to the digestion and the utilization to remove the toxic solvent, solvent process. So if you smell ammonia in your stall, this is a horse that uh, <coughs> definitely has an issue. The natural source of protein is either hay or grass. And you want the lowest protein um, in <coughs> um, the horse's feed because a low boat protein diet, um, horses don't need all that protein. It taxes the kidney. And um, the, that's why we say the Stanley Timothy hay pellets, because the Stanley Timothy hay pellets um, has 6% protein in it. And it doesn't have high um, heat on it. The high heat causes um, the enzymes to die. Most of your processed uh, commercial feed that are in pellets are over 100% and the Stanley hay pellets is not, okay? It's, I think it's 60%, but it's highly digestible. Uh, a lot of horses will, um, will um, gain weight on the Stanley Timothy hay pellets. Okay, so this has got 12%, and then if you're feeding hay, then you got another 12 to 15% of protein in there, okay? Um, crude fat, 3%, crude fiber, calcium, and then they have the D3. Okay, so let's see what it has. It has grain products. Now you don't even know what you're feeding your horse. Plant protein, plant protein products. You don't know what you're feeding your horse. Processed grain byproducts. You don't know what you're feeding your horse. Molasses straight from the vats. 
with that uh, solvent in it, rough age products. Again, you don't even know what's in <laughs> your products. So um, there's your magnesium oxide to tie up everything. Um, another copper oxide, another magnesium oxide, zinc oxide, and then this is salt. So you don't want to force feed salt, let horses decide. So, um, um, when the client started my program, changed the wheat milling hay stretcher and a bag of regular minerals to her feed store carried. She called me not a lot long after that to ask if I can come check her mare and exhibiting a sign of unrest, kicking, rearing, and mineral behavior. Her horse, uh, <coughs> mineral system was way off and balanced and creating problems, but the client was interpreting it as bad behavior, not seeing that her horse was fine until she went off the feeding program. I had another case of racetrack, part-time horse trainer who had four horse who never hit the board. Hitting the board means, um, and then I'm almost done, guys. Hitting the board means that you get in the first um, category of one through 20 top trainers of the track that week. And he went on my diet for some reason. I have no idea he listened to me. And for three months, he ran so many races, he made it to the top 20 trainers on the board. And he stopped using it and he fell way low, like 40. His horses hardly ran, it was awful. Um, so that is the conclusion of this podcast. And I'm sorry if I went over, but I don't think so. It's 56 minutes, I'm supposed to be an hour. Again, I am Lori Broccoloni and I have helped many horses, many horses. Go to my site, happynaturalhorse.com or Natural Equine Remedies and get the book, okay? Get the book. Comes with a DVD. Get both of them here uh, for $50 and that saves you money. Let's see if I can go there. Okay, if you have any questions, you can always email me. And I will gladly answer if you want um, in-depth study on your horse. Um, so you buy both books here. I should make this bigger. Um, and I certify people all over the world. Homeschool, home study program. Uh, a lot of them have gone on the big sky. A lot of them haven't. But a lot of them have, have gone on the big sky and they've done very well. So, okay. I'm going, my next video, my next thing is the demo on the pain point release. And when the weather clears, well, anyways, bye. I hope you learned any, some things.